This video is going to be talking hopefully about the rest of the electronics. So while I'm doing this, so I'm going to be talking about this part, but um, I'm going to be doing the probe right now. So you can watch this while I'm talking about the rest of it. Now the probe, now remember this is an SKR 1.3 board, it's slightly different in that the probe would normally be going down the bottom here. On a uh, 1.3 board you don't have a probe connector so we're going to put it in here which I think is 1.24 on the connections guide so it's tricky if the, the probe part so what's going to happen with that is so I'll just find the probe connector so the probe connector you get three pins from here so blue is signal hopefully I get this right blue is ground sorry and I could verify that by tipping that over, and I've got ground marked on that. Blue is ground, brown is power, and black is signal. So what I've done here on this end, you need to break out your power. So your power and ground, broken out here, and that's going to connect to down here uh, next to the X motor. You're going to plug that in. So that's going to give it the power, but the signal is a little bit different. Because this is... Uh, sorry, being powered 24 volts, it doesn't want that for the sensor. It won't work properly. So use this diode to help it work correctly. So what you need to do then is solder up a connector here. So I'm going to do that right now. And then um, Bob's your uncle. It is directional. I'll tell you what that means in a moment. Directional means that it matters which direction that little black bit is pointing out. The black bit should be pointing away from the SKR board. So connection-wise, this should be connected like that. So we're going to solder this part, and this part will eventually be um, connected up to a little a three-pin. So we'll do that now. I'm going to use my trusty third arm. These things are invaluable. You've seen this probably in a few other videos, but um, now it's even more important. So I'm going to solder this on. Let's um, do this. Hold it on there. Get this one reasonably close. There we go. The TS100. I've done this enough times now that I really should be thinking about getting a LiPo connector so I can power this portably because you can see the uh, connection I've got is a bit haphazard and silly. Alright, that is in place enough. So I would um, put some heat shrink tubing on this. I've actually got some clear stuff, which is a little bit big. So I'll put some clear heat shrink on plus some normal stuff to hold it in place. So touch this, turn it on, do the thing. I'm going to, because of the place where I'm doing this at, I should be catching any solder drips here because I'm naughty and should be doing this on the table. Whoopsies. Alright, that's in place there, that's good. Get this ready. See, 260, it's ready to do its thing. Okay. So, um, might as well tin these first. There we go. Tin this as well. Now you don't need much, just enough for it to take on. Alright, so that's there, that's there. Let's solder this connector. Solder, solder? I always get this wrong. I just want a nice, good connection. Yeah, it's not going anywhere in a hurry. Good. Hold it there for a moment. Is that on the other side? A little bit on the other side too. Good. Alright. 
be honest, that's not the best connection, but we will check it now. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to redo that while I've got the chance. Okay, press this down a little bit. Good. That's much better. Let's um, see how we went. Again, not great, but that's going to be good enough. So this will be going on here. So at this point, I should probably start doing the heat shrink. But I think what I'll do instead is I'll do the other side. So the reason this printer is out here at the moment is because I have to do this bit now. So I'll trim this down and solder this part on. Okay, so I will trim this and then tin it. There we go. Excellent. So, no solder flux. This is the pro tip if you're learning soldering. This makes solder apply much easier to the contacts that you're doing. Do this and everything seems to come together a lot more naturally. Okay, do it for this as well. I'm going to tin it. So I might pause this video until after I've done and um, we'll continue. Okay, here is the diode, that 85 diode. So again, the black is facing away from the board. Now that I'm going to put this in, so according to my connections, this goes on the furthest one up, the signal thing. You probably can't see it there, but there's an S. So it needs to go on the top bit here. We'll connect that now. Goes in here. There we go. We've made now a connection for this. Um, I recommend, and I've seen a few people do um, clear heat shrink over this bit, just so you can make sure, hey, it's definitely facing the right way. Um, I'll follow that same bit. So clear heat shrink, my heat shrink was a little bit big, so I put some heat shrink over these bits as well. So this bit doesn't really bend as such, which is probably what you want. So I'll connect this up, and then I'll talk about my wiring and what's left for me. There we go, so that's plugged in. Now again, power, which I'll do now, I might as well, needs 24 volts. Because if you supply 5 volts to your sensor, the um, sensing range is pretty much useless. Okay, so let's route this under here. Excellent. Plug it in. There's um, only really the heated bed connections for me to do now. And I'll probably, maybe I'll do a third part talking about that bit. Alright, so, we now have an almost complete printer. I'm going to go through the parts that I've um, completed and what's left. So, we have power from the bottom going to the Pi. Now, that's from the Meanwell 5 volt supply thing. And I'm also going to point out what's the differences between the 1.4 and the other one. Um, yeah, one moment, I'll just double check the underneath of the power supply. That's right, so yeah, 5 volts from that to the Pi. Um, I've mentioned on this one, because I've got a few Raspberry Pis here, that this one's for a 3D printer. That runs Clipper on it and lets me control stuff. So if you were wanting to go ahead and make a minimum viable 3D printer, uh, sensor-wise and all that kind of stuff, the m at least minimum things you need is the X and uh, Y, uh, X and Y steppers. Now use that loosely because that's the name in Clipper, but really we're talking about the AB motors. Biggest thing I've learned here, this is not A. Um, I don't know where I've read it, but in other guides where it said the rear left is A, that's not the case, at least on the V1.8. 
It's actually this one. Um, this gave me some trouble where the um, homing direction was going wrong. So if I had this incorrect, the A and B steppers, what was happening was it would home to the left correctly, but then instead of moving back to the homing sensor, it would um, go forwards. And the symptom of that is that I had these wired up incorrectly. Okay, so with that done, the other parts that I've got connected here is that I've got 24 volts going into the SKR. Now this is the same on the 1.4 and the 1.3. So again, this is a 1.3. 1.4 is slightly different in some connections. Um, you've got your steppers on there. Now these are Firestick 3 V3s. There's some little bit of problem with those, and um, I might bring up a picture of what my fix was, which was kind of genius, in that underneath these, I might see if I can take them off. If it's not too hard to take off, I'll try that. Yeah, I can take them off, all right. So there's a jumper that you basically cross in there. The other solutions are way too tricky. Have a look here. I'm gonna use my light on my um, phone. So see how I've got a jumper that's awkwardly bridged on the bottom two? So the middle pin, do I have a little, I don't have a tweezer. The middle pin of this is bridged with the rightmost pin of the second row up there. That um, lets you have it work properly because Feistech V3.0s had a problem where um, the one of the URARTs or something like that was um, wrapped around the wrong way. So one solution they had was to have a jumper pin go from the top to one of these pins. Um, yeah, didn't be a thing. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, some guys have said about cutting a wire on here. Now for the 1.3, apparently that may not be needed, but I'll get to that if I need to. When I mean that, I mean one of these pins. Three, so I'll connect this back up. Now, now that solution I've just mentioned there, if you've brought the um, stock Big Tree Tech model, you don't need to worry about that because you're using the steppers, the 2209s, that don't have that as a problem. So it's just plug and play, which is great. But I can tell you with the connections I have here with the config that things move across fine. Um, I haven't ran it at speed to run in any um, stealth shot problems, but it works. So that's great. So all of these are needed for the 1.3. I think the 1.4 might have one more or something like that, but more connections. Now, so B motor. Now that's wrong. That's actually A. Um, so that's X stepper. This is Y stepper. The other things that you have mapped to this is the um, X stepper. So this is actually your extruder down there. So I know that works. Correctly. So that's routed through to the wiring I'll show you up in there in a moment. Um, the other remaining things I have left to plug in is I've got two 24 volt fans that I need to break off in the connectors. And I think that I might need to run them into here. I'll need to confirm them with my settings, which is fine. Um, the other important thing is the end stops. So in the 1.4 uh, end stop sum guide, what happens is that you have your, um, let's double check here, luckily I've got these all labelled off. Um, Z end stop, which is the same on all of them, is here. Now on 1.4 you have your Y end stop and X end stop, uh, Y end stop and Z end stop here. Now on the 1.3 that gets moved back. Um, you could move it to the front to be honest, and it probably would make more sense. That's fine, whatever. Um, yeah, just make sure that your ground is on the furthest away pin. Yep, okay, so that's all fine with those. Oh, actually, um, yeah, they're non-directional, so it doesn't matter as long as the pins are in there because the, the front two, left two, is for ground and signal, and you don't need to supply power, so we don't bother with that kind of thing. So when I say you don't need to supply power, that's because these end stops don't need power. Um, you've probably been given the spiel about normally closed, that's what I'm doing for these. So you can, when you measure a multimeter, it should do a capacitance test and beep straight away, and when you hold it like that, it doesn't. That's what I mean by that. 
Uh, there's your um, XM stop. And I think that's pretty much it. The only other things I haven't connected here is the um, Z um, motors. They're ready to plug in. They'll go in there. Um, that's pretty much fine to go. And the only other thing I'm technically waiting on is a spring for the heated bed. Now I might talk about the heated bed in a moment, but I'll just double check that I've gone through all the cables that I need to on here. Um, so otherwise we've got is the thermistor is wired up here. This is the thermistor for um, the afterburner. That's to have a minimum running printer. Uh, I jumped over this before. Is um, You have to have your X and Y steppers wired up to move this bit. You also need to have the thermistor for your hot end. Even if you don't have power in that wired up, you do need to have the thermistor or a subtle cracker pops and not you do a um, force move or a stepper buzz. So minimum needed product to test out your stuff's working is that. Um, what is this pin here? This is, oh it's one of the end stops. Okay. So um, we're in a good spot with here at the moment. So again, the only things I need to plug in is the fan. Now that differs on 1.3 and 1.4. And the hot end is the same on all of them. Now I can tell this is definitely the hot end because these are the thickest wires that I've got running to the board. So they'll go in like that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's about it then. Pretty cool, eh? So I've been able to do a homing procedure if you looked at the previous video and it is pretty much all set. I'll unpause and show you the heated bed for a moment before I jump off. Okay, so honestly this could be uh, do with a bit of um, thinking but it is in a situation where it'll work. So your heated bed, um, I've been through this in previous videos, um, you've got a video a thing going here for your line connector, so I've, I've given you this a little bit of um, connections on here so I'll make sure I know what I'm talking about, but I can tell on here that it's line, neutral and that this smaller one is actually to ground. So in terms of wiring to the actual printer, these two, oh, I'm gonna, gonna test my brain a bit here. I think these two go into the SSR. Now I'm gonna pop up a bit of text here to say if I'm right or not. So basically your SSR connection will go into this and this connection, which I made a little bit longer for a reason, will go into the actual power supply. Okay, so SSR wise, this will plug on the output of that, and this will plug into your power supply. Now, you will have from your SSR two wires that will go across from here into your power supply as well. So that's why you need three connections onto your um, onto your um, 24 volt power supply. Not for the 24 volts, but for the mains connection power. At least that's the way I've done it. Um, what I need to do here is um, just make sure everything's all good. Um, pull the wires through here, make sure they're all fine, and then heat shrink that up. And this for Mr. Connection, I've seen what some people do instead. So in terms of routing wires, this is upside down, remember. This um, would sit like this, and this goes under the bed. Uh, not under the bed, to the bottom of the printer, where the um, deck is. And then this goes through to the rear panel. Now from the rear panel, your high voltage stuff then goes through there, but your thermistor is going to plug into the SKR board. That's why I've sort of left it like that at the moment. What other people have done is they've got this wire taken out of this shroud bit and then instead put it through the top of the rear enclosure where the um, the steppers have gone. To be honest, that probably might be the... I don't know. Yeah, this way is the better one I reckon now because this one flexes less and most of the time the printer is going to be in the top bit. I'm going to pause this.